channel. What's up? Hope you had a great week. The tribe is back in the house. I am Angie Dillon. And I'm Rose Dillon. And I'm Alvin Dillon. It's a tribe called Dylan Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for all your love and support. Just want to reiterate that we are so appreciative for all the shares, subscribe, the likes, all the comments, the DMs. Please keep it up. And you're helping us grow our digital family and make it a little bit bigger day by day. So thank you very much for your help. We're so excited and pumped about today's content. I am because I am a big Michael Jordan fan. Elvin, you are as well. We're going to give you our perspective and I guess critique the the new movie that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon have produced together called Air about Ni- the rise of Nike's empire. Am I right? Yep. And okay. before we get into it, though, we forgot about the win of the week. No, I didn't forget. Yeah. Psych, psycho. I don't know if you guys remember that. Okay. That I introduced yep. that. Yep. Okay. Win of the week. Lord, one of us. Let's start with you. Win of the week. I went to the gym on the weekday, which I never normally do. I usually go like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This time I went in the middle of the week on a Wednesday and it was busy. But I showed up and I did my thing. So I'm proud of myself for that because I'm kind of changing uh, thing, changing my routine. And I am a creature of habit. I like to do the same thing um, and then know what I'm getting myself into. So this was a little bit out of my comfort zone. I just went and did it. Kind of liked it. Awesome. Well, I discovered, well, I haven't discovered, I've known him for a while. His name is Sam Harris. He's a neuroscientist. He ha- was on Jay Shetty's podcast and he was talking about his mindfulness app. So he's someone who uh, is educated here in America, but he had gone back to India to learn their ways of meditation. So he kind of brought in like science and spirituality together. So I actually tried his app out and it was really neat. Like his meditations were really wonderful of uh, just being like, cause he's, there's a big difference between being awareness and my mindfulness and then deep meditation. Like there's all these different ones that I didn't really realize. So I tested his app out uh, for a whole week and it was pretty cool. Like I really got it to really kind of quiet down that inner voice. And I enjoyed that. Uh, What's meditation. the name of the app? Mindfulness. Oh, nice. But yeah. It's a really, or, or it could be called wake. And then that, that part of it is called mindfulness. I'll have to oh, nice. uh, okay. get back to you, but yeah, it's a pretty cool app. It is a subscription you have to pay for, but they give you a one month free trial. Oh, that's cool. And the okay. cool thing he was saying on the, on the show was if someone can't afford it, as long as they just send him, send his people an email, he'll give them the subscription for free. Wow. Yeah. Cause that's, oh, that's how nice. important he says meditation is. Okay. Um, yeah. and so this is on the Google play store. You just download yep. the app. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so maybe we'll put it at the end of our yeah. thing for yeah. listeners and viewers that are in, interested in this. Yep. Okay, cool. That was my win of the week, Al. Your turn. Mine is, so all those DIY uh, home improvement, home reno TV shows that you guys say I watch a lot of, <laughs> well, they came in handy. <laughs> they came in handy because the color schemes I picked for the bathrooms and all the um, fa- uh, faucets, uh, the countertops, the flooring, uh, the roommates didn't see the the, the vision. vision. They didn't like, no, this is not going to look good. And one of the roommates, especially the, my mom, she kept saying, I want shiny floors. I don't, she was really obsessed with everything shiny, which is the 30 year old look. And I said, no, we're going to go with some matte looks and matte black. So they kind of fought me on it. But I said, no, I went to the store. and I just ordered everything came in and they weren't seeing it as it was getting put in pieces. And then finally, when it was all three together with the matte black showers, uh, the, uh, the fixtures, uh, white countertops and uh, brownish wood floor, they're like, oh, this looks really good. I'm like, thank you, Homes on Homes. Yeah, <laughs> all that TV came in handy. So that was the win of this week. Good. I'm, I'm glad that the Homes on Homes, those uh, renovation shows came yeah. in handy. Another show that I hope will eventually um, come in handy is because you watch a lot of Guy Fieri and those cooking shows, yeah, but you have those. yet to make something. Nope. I love eating, but I don't like the preparation, the cooking part. So, and I think a lot of people relate to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good stuff. That's a great win, Al. Mm-hmm. Feels good. good. All awesome. Right. All right. Well, I have a series of questions that I want us to get through. For So today we're going to discuss the movie Air. Um, and Ange, why don't, or Al, why don't you guys explain what this movie is all about? All right. Well, it's, uh, I guess it's a movie based on the precursor of before Michael Jordan became extremely famous and how he got to that level of building the brand of Air Jordan, mm-hmm. the logo. And he was great at the time when he was uh, like about to be drafted in, but it was about which company was going to get him and brand him to become their ambassador and literally become pretty much like the face of that company, which today is Nike and Air Jordan is his own lineup of that company. So Mm -hmm. it was basically the story of how the person in Nike 
got Michael Jordan and what it took to get him and the story behind it and how they created the logo and everything and whatnot. Yeah. And it's also about uh, Nike, Nike's competitive edge during that time. Yeah. Because at that time in the eighties, Converse was the main, the, the, uh, the main shoe company. Yeah. For the NBA. Now Nike has actually bought Converse and owns Converse, but Nike was kind of known as just a running shoe. It wasn't a basketball shoe, right? Yeah. And I think Adidas was also one of the big contenders at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So all the athletes at that time, when they were playing basketball, it was all Converse or it was mm-hmm. Adidas, Adidas. I think it's a German company. Yeah, mm-hmm. Adidas. Yeah. And uh, all day I dream about sports. sports. Is there? there yeah. Is that what it really yeah. means? Okay. Yeah. I thought we just, everyone just made it up. And, nope. All and day everyone I had dream their own about versions sports. of it. No, all day I dream about sports. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it, now this was a critical time for Nike and their executives to kind of really, uh, I guess, switch and really uh, up the ante with their brand. Mm. And and you see the collaboration between the Jordans and how the uh, Air Jordan brand came to be and, and how Michael Jordan built that empire. And kudos to his mama bear, Dolores mm-hmm. Jordan. You have to watch Watch that movie. We're going to get into the questions. I don't want to get too excited, but man, I love Michael Jordan's mm-hmm. mom and she's still holding on. She's 81 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But man, just the fire and what she saw for her son and the vision, the long term vision mm-hmm. that she saw. She was visionary. Yeah. 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 To yeah. me, I just just love that. Yeah. OK, so if I rate you, ask me a question. So I was going right? to ask you, like, put on that Cisco and Ebert hat now and rate the movie for our viewers. OK. I'm going to say 9.5. I want to give it a 10. Um, and the only reason I'm taking off uh, five points off is I've just found it a little long. Okay. So I think that nowadays, just with our attention span, let's just try and shorten the movies a little bit, make it quicker and sharper and more punchier. But nine and a half. Really an L? Yeah, I'd give it a nine or 10. Sometimes I do find when the movies are a little bit slower, because I feel like it's almost le- meant for your mind to kind of wander and come back again, because they know that sometimes it's hard to keep someone's attention for that long and people will walk away or come back and watch it maybe in pieces. So for me, I found the, the speed good because I was kind of connecting with it and it gives you enough time to think about what's happening as it's happening. And then you get to the next scene. So the only one thing is I wish they would shown Jordan's face in there. They intentionally didn't do that because they want people to pay attention to the actual story. Mm-hmm. But that I would have liked to see like whatever version they had of Michael in there, their face. But other than that, I thought it was very inspirational. And uh, when you people are doing great things, you want to hear, hear their story. So I enjoyed this version of it, how it was a right. prelude of how they became to be. Mm-hmm. What about you? It's funny. I think because I'm such a, I'm so biased. I think Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are just like this match made in heaven. So whatever they produce, I'm probably gonna be like, it's a 10. Uh, I thought it was a great film too. Uh, very inspirational. Um, I think, you know, given our podcast is we're trying to, you know, motivate, elevate, inspire. That movie really kind of feeds our soul. Hence why we're doing this episode mm-hmm. yeah. on this, on this particular topic. Uh, so I, I would definitely give it a nine out of 10 as well. But do you remember when you first started? Yes. The movie? I, I know how movies always go. You have like a, people in the house and it's like supposed to be a good movie. You need to be either watching it on your own or watching in a setting where people are ready to watch a great movie. Right. You just threw it on in the background. And you're like, oh, this movie's so slow. It's terrible. I'm like, there's no way. Matt and, to Damon. Give, and to give the viewers right. context was like, yeah, I, Al's absolutely right. I turn on this movie while there's about 20 people walking around the house and yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to get into this movie. Yeah. And you weren't even focused. And I wasn't yeah. even focused. Yeah. And when someone like Matt Damon and uh, ben, ben Affleck Apple. create a movie, you need to understand there's a certain caliber that they create. So absolutely. I was like, I was like, no, this is the movie. Even I knew I was like, I'm watching this on my own. I was like, I don't want anyone's two cents chirping while I'm trying to watch a good movie. You want to absorb it. And I watched it on my own. And I was like, this is a great movie. And I messaged you guys said, yes. you need to watch this movie. And then what did you guys say? Wow, this is yes. amazing. No, and I'm glad you did that because then you said you need to do this on your own time. And then mm-hmm. I did on one evening, mm-hmm. put it, uh, mm-hmm. put time aside to watch the movie and it was by myself. And whoa, I mean, I got up and I was like, yeah, yeah. like, so really that, you're that was right. like the McGregor documentary. You guys, I was watching it and it was like a quiet day. So you guys sat down, I was like, they're going to like this if I just let them watch it. Mm-hmm. And like 15 minutes into it, you guys are all like really mm-hmm. engaged with it. I was like, yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. You didn't give that movie a chance. No, I really yeah. didn't. And again, it's, it's on me to take that accountability that the timing was off. Mm-hmm. My headspace was off. What was I thinking? Trying to find, watch an inspirational mm-hmm. movie movie when the, the house is chaotic yep. and I was chaotic. I think mm-hmm. I just flew back in. I had driven the next day. I wasn't even in a headspace that I would be able to soak in what that movie meant. Mm-hmm. But when I did it on my off time, because we said, well, let's discuss this on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was really great because it was homework for me and I took it really seriously then. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. So here's a question for you guys. So Al, are you a basketball fan? And if you are, what does Michael Jordan mean to you? So I've always been a big basketball fan. The funny thing is I would enjoy playing the sport more than watching it on TV. And I find that with every sport, unless it's playoff season, I find I can't watch very sports very long unless it's highlights. But playing it, I'm down for any time. Someone wants to go throw the ball around, we'll go shoot hoops. Uh, growing up, I played in the uh, elementary team in, uh, in high school. I played for a little bit, but you got lazy because you're like, ah, 6 a.m. practices, after school practices. You get focused more with girls and parties and being so in social. So it didn't last too long, but I, I still enjoy it. I have a basketball hoop in the backyard, which is 70 percent complete. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's nearing completion, hopefully coming summer of 2023. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But I've, I've always been a really big Michael Jordan fan. But growing up, I was always a type of person that if everyone's following one player, I go the complete opposite. So and when Michael Jordan was getting extremely famous and big, I, I enjoyed love watching him play, but I wouldn't buy his shoes or his clothing, not because it was too expensive because I couldn't afford you guys paid for them. But I was like, everybody's wearing this at school. How am I going to be different if I'm just wearing another Michael Jordan mm-hmm. shoe? So then I became like a big Gary Payton fan, big Allen Iverson fan. Mm-hmm. And I would watch the, whenever Allen Iverson was paying uh, Jordan. It was awesome to see because... Jordan actually would have to like bring his A game because there was some times where he actually couldn't beat Iverson. Iverson would do a crossover. You see Jordan flying this way and Iverson has gone with the ball and everyone would just be shocked like he just did that to Jordan. So like you got to see someone that actually would give Jordan a run for his money. So there's a, plenty of other great players that I would generally like follow. But Jordan was always like, you're, he's like your golden, like your, your go to guy. Yep. But um, he just, he taught you to be like, look, you, you can be great at anything. You just got to put the work in. And he was like that generation's Kobe where he, his players at some point were started hating on him because he would just demand too much of them. Mm -hmm. But he was great. And same question to you. Like, I mean, I, are you a basketball fan? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I had a, a basketball court. I made dad put a basketball court in our backyard when I was in grade seven. I was the, uh, I think it was called like the three on three champion winner. I played 21. I excelled in sports and it was actually dad's way of connecting with me. Dad actually, I think introduced me to having that mindset of, you know what, like think, believe you can do it. And I think sports was because uh, our parents didn't have enough money to put us into actual sports. So it was like, okay, I'll just give her a basketball court and she can shoot hoops. And I really spent a lot of time honing my craft in basketball where I think I was amazing at it. Um, and what Michael Jordan meant to me, man, uh, growing up in the nineties and watching Michael Jordan and he is the goat of basketball legendary. I get so excited. He created nostalgia. Is it nostalgia? Right. Is that how you say nostalgia? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just watching him and, you know, to watch uh, basketball in the nineties. It's so different than how basketball is today. I felt it was just anytime Jordan would come, it was that level that not only would he come, he would expect greatness from his teammates and they all rose to the occasion. And when you would watch him play, you couldn't help but get inspired to be better, to have that drive of like excellence and just greatness. And so to me, Michael Jordan just uh, stands for hope, inspiration, drive, determination, motivation, because he did go through a lot of a lot of things. And like me, he was also an underdog. People didn't really look at him twice because he was that short, stocky kid. And they kind of overrode him. And they, uh, you know, like, he's not going to be a point guard. You know what? He's too short. He's too small. So I just feel like he kind of beat all the odds and all the naysayers and just came out like, look at me now. Yeah, he was legendary. Well, you know, and my answer is funny because I'm not a basketball fan. And I think growing up, I always wondered, you guys always had pictures of Michael Jordan in your mm-hmm. room. You had Allen Iverson, you had yeah. other basketball players, Magic Johnson. You guys both had your rooms covered with basketball stuff. Mm-hmm. And my room was covered with Bollywood stuff, but it was really <laughs> funny that you guys both always had that. It was the mm-hmm. one thing that I didn't have in common with you two. Yep. And I always wondered like, why, why don't I don't see this? Um, I see Michael Jordan's brand. I think the movie was really um, educational for someone like me who's not uh, a basketball fan, um, didn't really watch the sports or, or, or participate in any of the sports. Uh, it was really cool to see his story, his mm-hmm. drive, what took him there. Mm-hmm. Cause again, I always just knew him as being this profound, amazing player. I didn't realize the back of the mm-hmm. scenes behind the scenes work that he had um, put in, but uh, yeah, it was really cool. I was, um, at crypto.com, uh, crypto, sorry, there is a location in Los Angeles and the arena is called crypto. And it was Golden State Warriors versus uh, Lakers. LA Lakers. And it was the finals. And I was there for work. Oh, and wow. I made a story for Instagram and everyone was losing their mind. And I was like, 
Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> Still don't get Watching it. Watching a game live is a I, whole other experience. I bet, I bet. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 All right. So my next question to you guys, did you, Al, did you connect with any of the characters in the movie? Um, I felt like I connect with Matt Damon because when he, mm -hmm. when he saw the vision with him, like I see the vision, certain other things that I've done where I can see what it's going to be like in the future. And you're like, no, I have to stick with this. I have like, you're doing whatever you can to convince people around you to say, no, I need to do this because I, that's what's going to be, but they can't see it. Yeah. So I, I felt that like that drive in him that I was like, I, I, I've done that a few times where I'm like, no, they're not understanding, especially with like the Renos right now, when I'm doing it, I'm like, if I were to listen to the, the roommates and we follow their choices of what they're doing, you're going to have a house that is looks like a mishmash of things. And it looks like you've renovated a house that stuck 30 years ago, like like a like a time warp, because everything that they were picking were the shiny chandeliers, the shiny stuff that we already have in our house. That's 35 years old. Right. And the stuff they wanted, I was just like, this is not making any sense. I was like, none of this stuff is going to mix well together and they're going to hate it once it's all put together. It's like, you've been to one of those houses where you're like, who designed this house? Like what the hell happened here? That's what would have happened. I saw the vision. And I was like, no, I was like, if we keep it simple, if we pick the right choices, I know what's going to turn out to be. And I just have to force them into it, force them into mm -hmm. it. So Matt Damon's character named Sunny is the one that you would identify mostly with and you'd say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ange, how about you? Is there any characters in the movie that uh, you felt you care, you resonated with? Two, I would say. Um, yeah. Sonny, for sure, only because he didn't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. And he just went to great lengths. I love the fact that he believed in Michael Jordan so much that he just did what was not conventional because the agent was like, don't call them, don't show up at their house or anything. And he just showed up, like, I guess, a good so Southern person hospitality and met with the parents to understand, like, what am I going to, you know, like, how am I going to make seal the deal with this? And I like... Uh, the fact that he connected with the mom, he knew that, okay, you know what, in order to get to Jordan, I need to connect right. with the mom. I love that. And the other character that I love is, oh man, Dolores Jordan. Love her. Just who was the actress that played that? Um, she is from that making a murder show. Um, she's famous. She's been, yeah, quite she's a quite famous. Yeah. No, 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 hold on. I can't. Oh, you know what? Now you got me. Yeah. Google her. Cause yeah, what I, and while you're Googling her, uh, if I asked that question because I was listening to Ben Affleck on interview and, Michael Jordan told him when he asked, I want to make a movie about you. And Michael Jordan said, you better get that actress to be my mother. Yeah. Really? She's the only person that's yeah. allowed to play. So he's like, I had to figure out a way to convince this person. Yeah. I need you in this movie because you're the only person he wants yeah. to play the mother role, which I thought was yeah. really neat. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? Now that I think about it, I do connect with Ben Affleck as character as well, because he also was a type of person where like, if he knows somebody else truly believes in something, he has their back. He's like, just do it, do what you gotta do. That's like when you're making clips and doing stuff and you're like, I see this, the, the finished product. I'm just like, when you say, don't worry, just do what you have to do. I'll figure it out. I'm like, I trust you. Like, I get it. Like right. that's, this is your I wheelhouse. I haven't let you down yet. Yeah, right? This is your wheelhouse. I was like, I trust the, the process and the vision. I'm like, you do you. I know where my strengths are and my weaknesses are. I'm like, you worry about that and I'll focus on my part of it. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's why this our our, our tr the trio works so well together yeah. is because we because everyone has their own real. like their vision their own piece of what okay, needs to yeah, be done. Got her name, yeah. Oh man, she's on Viola Davis. That's, that's it. Oh, oh, she's a brilliant, Davis. brilliant. Yeah. She, well she done, killed Viola. it. Good well job. Done. She's a brilliant actress. I actually seen her in other shows. Uh, I think the one's called How to Make a Murder, or something along that. And Making she's a Murder. She's amazing. She's an amazing, amazing actress. But just Michael Jordan, both of Michael Jordan's parents, James Jordan, uh, rest in peace, and um, Mom Delore. Short, they were just a pillar of strength. And at that time, when the majority of the market is Caucasian people and you're a minority, they held their own and they knew their son's worth. Like, God damn it. Like when you have parents like that, you're destined for greatness. Like he was destined for greatness right. because his mom knew that my son is talented. He's got skills. And I see the long-term vision for like where this company is going to go. And to at that time, pioneer and say, you know, and to pitch to a, a huge organization and say, my son needs to have a stake in this brand if the shoe is going to be named after him. Like, yeah, she loved that. Mm -hmm. That was huge. Especially at a time where they, they were not giving any ownership of anything. Yeah. And just trying to convince her. That's say, what I learned This is the best that. deal you're going to take. But most people would have gave it and said, okay, I'm just going to take the big check for now. Mm -hmm. But she saw the long-term yeah, vision and, and wow. greatest decision she's ever made. Because I think 
what is it? I think Air Jordan does at least like, I think his portion is like 400 million. Just what wow. his cut is from the brand. I think it does like four or five billion a year. Yeah. And, and it's still famous today, right? I think oh, yeah. still yeah. see kids When a Jordan around. shoe drops, the price I think now are about 350, 400 dollars. Wow. Yeah. That's the one unfortunate part that they've kind of made people, it caters to the people that are um, less fortunate and yeah. they will spend, parents will save up their money to go spend on it's that shoe. It's an exclusive brand now, right? Yeah, well, it's always been expensive. Like even when they dropped, it's just that they've consistently kept it like where if you want a Jordan pair, like you're gonna drop like three, four hundred, five hundred dollars maybe on the shoe. There's a um there's a certain prestige that comes with the Air Jordan brand. And I'm not gonna lie, even when they drop the uh the track suits, like they just get I used to back. love the track yeah. suits, yeah. 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 The velour track suits drop. I remember like trying to save up money, trying to figure out how to way to get it. And there's the problem with the sizes are always too big and you have to look for it on sale or just get the pants. You can't get the top because it's mm -hmm. too expensive because it was like $200 for each piece. Yeah. Uh, I have a good friend of mine that is just obsessed with all Jordan gear, Jordan, uh, Jordan stuff. Anywhere, anywhere he goes and we'll go and be like, I gotta go to the Nike store. I'm like, and all he looks for is Jordan gear. And it's funny because when I look back at some of the stuff now, like some of the styles, how the Jordan brand, Air Jordan brand has evolved because some of them, I'm like, oh, that's tacky why would you do that but you can see that how they were trialing things out to see okay what are kids gonna like what are people like what's more prominent and it always goes back to the simplicity of the simple air jordan simple mm -hmm. and like a black track suit and just something yeah. small like that yeah. yeah i actually made a purchase of something as well that i need to wear i think it's like a a three-quarter length uh air jordan track um i don't know it's like a, a legging or something for women and it's just chic and nice and like and it just represents Jordan. It's funny to say because I have a Chicago Bulls shirt that I've been wearing, and everyone's like, "Why do you know you're a Chicago Bulls fan?" It's like a couple of my guy friends. I'm like, "Yeah, no, it was it was like nine dollars at Ross, and it's just a perfect <laughs> cut when I go to the gym. Like, I really was the only desire was because it was on sale for nine bucks. That's why I bought oh. it. <laughs> I remember we had both had Bulls jerseys. She had the yeah. Jordan yeah, one. I had one too. Did, yeah. But the funny is when I bought it, I never wore it because it was like one of those things where like I don't want to ruin it and get it dirty or <laughs> so I just let it hang there and every now and then I might wear it and then when I actually grew out of it I felt so sad giving it away I was like I just want to hang it up on my wall mm -hmm. so Bring I it. finally had to yeah. get rid of it. Uh, Al and I used to go watch the Harlem Globetrotters when I was younger I worked in radio media I actually mm. took Al to I know I got yeah. to meet Jordan and this what? fool you got to meet Michael yeah, Jordan I got Jordan Pippen all the greats yeah. hang on back yeah. up for yeah. our viewers yeah. did you say you got to yeah. meet yeah. Michael Jordan we had Jordan. seats because you had the back she so had to interview them and stuff yeah I just discovered something about I worked in no, radio. This is the story. I was what I heard about. I was like, I used to collect cards, all the basketball cards, hockey player cards, all that. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna take up my cards. She's like, no, why are you gonna take your cards? Take a book. And I'm like, no, I want him to sign the card. She's like, no, he's not gonna sign the card, he'll sign a book. Literally a father on it. So I left my cards at home because I had all I had like all his rookie cards, all the other ones. I took a fucking book with me, <laughs> got it signed by Jordan, and I yeah. still have the book. Yeah. Pippin signed it, Rodman signed yeah. it, everybody signed it. And after I looked at it, I'm like, how the fuck are they going to know this is Michael Jordan's signature or Pippin's signature? And I was we like, there, if they want a car, he, like, he could have been a multi billionaire. It's absolutely worthless right now because it's worth something to me, but it literally I'm like, my oh. thing was, I'm taking my brother. It's a media event. I work here. I don't want to be like, hey, can you sign this card and get the card? He's signing something. Well, he Listen, did, yeah. I just think it's going to be mind blowing for viewers and uh, people who would dream to meet Michael mm -hmm. Jordan. Yeah. And the two of you got to meet Michael yeah. Jordan, Scotty, Pippin. Who yeah. else did you say? Um, Dennis, Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Rodman no, was oh, I nice saw Dennis Rodman yeah. in Vegas. But I also met some other, a few other players. I think Charles we, Barkley. Uh, we, no, we went on different games. The ones that yeah. I liked, I wanted to go to. Um, yeah. I can't remember. I have my book. I had to go through it. I think I wrote their names Can below. You, make sure you bring me that a book because that's yeah. really neat. That I, I kept it like in a, like a, a but a lockbox and I put the lockbox <laughs> inside it so like a and so direct sunlight. So I hid it because like I want to keep this thing in pristine yeah. condition. And I, his is it written in uh, blue felt like a light yeah. blue felt marker wow. that he wrote. Yeah. And it was so it's so cool. How was he? He was the one he's like i don't write i don't sign signatures in pen i only use felt markers so we like whoever was around when you said he met michael, michael jordan, jordan. Yeah, okay. michael jordan. Yeah. yeah he wow. only signs in felt. Yeah. yeah but just to be around greatness i think yeah. al i just saw as you know i was because yeah. there's a 10-year gap between yeah. us but to see my little brother in awe he was like mm -hmm. al was like oh yeah and yeah. then we're sitting there because we were literally like, you know what the hoop is? You're literally on the ground right next to it. You're so close to give you those things and distract the other players yeah. to play. And so we'd walk, go watch the Grizzlies. No one really cares for the Grizzlies. You're just there to watch the other team that's yeah. coming. Those yeah. are some good Gary times. Payton too. I was a big fan of Gary Payton. Yeah. I met him with uncle at, he took us to I think 360 Motors because we used to watch them on TV. And we went there and he was there getting his car done that day. And uncle went up to him and was like, hey, can my nephews take a picture with you? And I remember taking a picture of him. And then I actually had his shoes too before I went through. I didn't wear them that day.
that time because I wanted to have him shine my shoes. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah, yeah it, it wasn't. But I had a picture of him. But you know what? No, hopefully no one takes that memory away because yeah. that's a mm. really cool experience cool. that you guys just uh, what, what about you? What character stuck with you? Um, ben Affleck. You know why? <laughs> Flashy. <laughs> no, when he was like, shh. I need to meditate right now. <laughs> I need you guys to all quiet down. That's exactly how I was like, yep, yep. You need to make big decisions. You need to be in calm energy now is what I'm learning. Mm-hmm. And you can't make it. De- and I like that. Like you said, he let Sonny run the yeah, you know, show. That, trust I, trust I, I don't have, this isn't my wheelhouse. Maybe I'm not as good at this. I'm happy now at that point in my life to say, I don't know the answers here. This isn't my wheelhouse. I'm happy to leave mm-hmm. that to someone else to make the decision. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Definitely. And I, I want us to, before we wrap up, I really want us to talk about the one powerful scene in that movie. I know you guys are, I, I think you're on the same page as me when Matt Damon has that conversation with how he come, how he, uh, gets Michael Jordan to sign with Nike. Do you remember that, that scene that was so powerful when he says, we all want to be a part of something great. great. Yeah. We just all behind the scenes want to be a part mm, of something that we know is going to be a le- Yeah. That pitch was like, that's exactly how I think I would have felt at that same moment. Is we just want to not not a piece of the pie, finance, just being a part yeah, of this part level of, of greatness. Story and the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that make you feel when you guys saw that 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 scene? I enjoyed the whole thing when he was trying to pitch it to him. I was just like, even after that, I was like, wow. I was like, I would sign with you guys. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Give me a shoe. Let me sign it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like how, well, here's the thing. I like the way they played it out and they do a whole marketing thing. Cause where I work for an organization, we sometimes have to do these types of things where you're doing marketing and you have to like pitch it to your CEO and your executive team. And I'm like, oh man, like this is terrible. And sometimes you don't need a whole marketing presentation. You need to speak from the heart. Yeah, and that is what um, Matt point. Damon did is that what he was feeling and the belief and the conviction that he had for Michael Jordan, that is what shined through than any marketing booklet pamphlet it was because he was mm-hmm. speaking from the heart. And I connected with that because every word that he said resonated with me. I was like, yeah, you know, like Michael Jordan, you'd be a fool if you don't sign with him. And we don't know because Michael Jordan, like, you know, the, the frame was like he had a poker face. Right. Right. And you didn't know what they were thinking, but he saw like with his mom, like we're going to make you great and everyone around you is going to feel your greatness and you could feel the authenticity in their pitch that they're mm-hmm. like they knew that they were they weren't looking at him just as a number like how they are showing the other brands were just adding but like you already have so many so many great players how's jordan mm-hmm. going to be different in your roster nike didn't have that so it was almost going to be like this yeah. is our golden child we're putting all our resources and yeah. time into one person and they didn't compare him because the other agents other companies were comparing him remember to all these other athletes yeah. and you don't want when you're still coming out you want to look at yourself as an individual and I think that's where they honed in and like, this is you. We're not comparing you to anyone else, but we see your greatness and just trust us. You know what? I think that's actually a similar story to Steph Curry when they were trying to sign him. I think it was, I don't know which company it was, but do you know how they have like basic cookie cutter marketing campaign? And they mm-hmm. just change the person's name on it. They were trying to pitch it to Steph Curry to sign him and they forgot to change the, the I guess the meeting before to the, who the player, they literally just took the yeah. same marketing presentation. campaign presentation and they left the other person's name on there. And when the, I think it was a dad that saw it, he's like, how is my son going to be any treated any differently when you guys couldn't take the wow. time to change yeah. the name on there. So he didn't sign with that company and ended up signing with Under Armour. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I, it shows that you're not important. Then, yeah, right? yeah, you're, you're right. No, I think it was really fascinating. I, um, I came to realize that, you know, Michael Jordan is a star and he puts the work in, but there's a f- group of people behind the scenes that are also putting in the work mm-hmm. to make you great. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Like there's, it's, he's not just mm-hmm. one person. There's a group of people, his mm-hmm. trainers. Um, and, and remember he had that trainer, Ken Grover. I watched his interview mm-hmm. and all these people around him mm-hmm. to build this brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They were really the cool. dream team, him, they Pippen, really Robin, the Phil Jackson, like they were, I think it was five champions there or six, six. And six. here's the thing. A lot of people, I don't know if they realize this, but in 1993, that was the time that the bulls won their third championship okay. and he was going to throw in the towel because his dad want was said i think you should try your luck in baseball so do you see when then uh he had some this is un- unfortunately 1993 shortly after the bulls won uh, michael jordan's dad tragically passed away in a, in a mm-hmm. it was a was it a, in, no, in a murder a robbery yeah. gone wrong. and so uh, jordan at that time decided to i think throw in the towel i think he was considering uh baseball 
But this is where the greatness of Michael Jordan comes. He actually somehow took unfor that unfortunate pain and came back to win the 1996 mm -hmm. NBA championship, the 1997 NBA championship, and the 1998 NBA championship, mm -hmm. and six times, six winner. But to come back and win it three times, and I believe the sixth win was on Father's Day, and it was the most emotional one. And mm -hmm. I remember as a kid, I, I didn't know the story too much because we weren't allowed to watch news that much. But as I got older now, and I remember that moment when he looked in the crowd to his mom because his dad would always be there. And I'm like, that was why he was looking in the crowd. And I felt his pain because I would watch every single like Michael Jordan game and Chicago Bulls game. I would not miss any game. So to have and be motivated to see that level of greatness and motivation and drive to continue on uh, through the tough times is why I'm like, I freaking love, and he is the goat. Mm -hmm. it's I think Andrew goat. light up. You took yeah, different hand. I'm loving like Michael Jordan. Yeah. I really do him and Mike Tyson. Yeah. 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 You really like, you really have it for those boys. Yeah. yeah. All right. I used to love his signature move, like with his tongue sticking out when he's about to go in for the dunk yeah. or if it was like the buzzer beater when, you know, there's only four seconds left. Who do you give the ball to? You mm -hmm. give it to Jordan. It doesn't matter where he's at. Yeah. How many people are covering him? You know it's yeah. going in. You wait, see the thing go slow mo, and it goes in. Mm -hmm. He's just like, and you that's know, Jordan uh, for you. You know the tongue. That's not even his thing. I think it's he copied it from his dad because his dad would do some sort of woodworking stuff, and he would make this face, oh. kind of like you know when our mom yeah. would wash dishes and make this awkward face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Michael Jordan's dad used to do this thing with the tongue, and then he's copied because he wanted to be Makes so sense. much like his dad, mm -hmm. and that became his like his like brand signature thing. trademark. Yeah. So much sense. Yeah. Oh my god, I could talk about Michael Jordan like for hours and hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's a wrap, guys. Let's wrap it up. I think that is a wrap. We would just like to thank all of our listeners and all of our viewers for tuning in to today's epic episode talking about the movie, Air, Michael Jordan. The great Michael Jordan. The Chicago Bulls. Just what basketball stood for us and what the movie represented for us. And we hope we were able to make you smile. And if you have not seen the movie, we highly encourage you to go ahead and watch the movie. It's a uh, by made by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, right? Yep. And yep. it's called the movie is called Air. It's on Amazon Prime. Yes. Uh, until next week, please stay safe. Take care of yourself. Think about a win of the week, and we will be back next week. We are signing off. We are a tribe called Dylan Podcast. Bye for now. Bye bye. Take care.